Hello and welcome to the Fresh Air Sci-Fi Show. I'm Joe. I'm Dave. Here um, with the little keyboard. Oh yes. How's the uh, Raspberry Pi going? Pretty good. Yeah. Have you got much use out? out? Have you got much use of oh, yeah. out of it through your course as well, or just personal at the moment? Just personal at the moment. Ah, main bit that's fun with new tech, isn't it? <laughs> that's the one. And it's so much better than the Android box. Is it? Yeah, like faster, more I can do with it. Um, it's a computer, in it? Rather than just a little Android gizmo. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to say hello to everybody who's joined in the chat. Um, we've got Leon, Greg, Philip, and Outdone. Uh, anyone else, uh, please say hello as well. Don't be afraid. Um, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the D&B mix. I, um, I was... Very, very crap tonight, possibly more so than usual. I got lucky with a few mixes that I completely stacked, and they just happened to work, even though I fucked them up. <laughs> They're the best guys. Never. <laughs> Never. You're awesome. <laughs> I'm really not, but thank you. <laughs> but people aren't here for the mix, really. They're here for the philosophy, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> and our, our, oh, well, our jovial wit. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're here for philosophy, the buggered. <laughs> Though tonight is obviously a bit more of a a, a casual one. Um, there isn't so much going into uh, tonight's show as as our usual ones. We've just had a few conversations recently in various Facebook groups and on Twitter and things like that, and we've we've spent some time recently discussing good ways to communicate and focusing on, you know, uh, respecting your opponent, taking your time to understand them, not seeing them as opponent, but actually seeing them as a partner that you're there trying to find truth with. Um, oh, hey, Opie, nice to see you as well. Uh, hey, and, Opie. <laughs> and, and today we're going a little bit the other way and we're thinking about... Um, common things that you might have heard both theists and atheists do in discussion groups or on Twitter or anything like that. All the, the common mistakes that we all make, and we've probably all made them ourselves at some point, if we're completely honest. Uh, the, the, there isn't actually anything wrong with having made uh, a mistake, at least in general. Um, only a few of them will, you know, screw up your entire life. <laughs> but... Um, I, I would suggest that with these mistakes, ad own up to them, admit you've made them, and do what you can to be better in the future. And I think that's the best anyone can really do with this sort of thing. So, Dave, I mean, you suggested the topic tonight. Did you have something that you wanted to start off the conversation with? Or should we just think about random little ones up in the air? Well, it was more of the conversation we had a few days back, and then we had one yesterday with Steve McRae, and I actually had somebody rage quit and delete a whole thread on Facebook today. <laughs> Amazing. It, it was just more of those that kind of brought it to mind. It, it, it was just terrible behavior. Yeah, I mean, we had a couple of them in, in our own debate group recently as well, um, which makes it all the, the worse because we're we're here trying to encourage better behaviors and then we've got people in our group doing the same sort of thing um so did you did you want to address one of them to start and um, well what was the one the other day uh is that uh, is was that like is, really angry yes so that was that i'm, I'm not going to name names but that robert guy will will do yeah yeah yeah. Um so that was in a debate group. Uh what was it about? I can't even remember what the conversation was about now. That was in the Atheist and Theist Forum or something like that. And um I can't I don't even... think I'm even ah, in the group. I remember it. No, no, the group for some reason got like banned and then came back i think someone posted something inappropriate and it just basically oh, shut no. down the whole group and i left it after the conversation with that guy yeah, yeah it was just every post in it was so 
terrible, just terrible. And I, I felt myself actually having brain cells committing suicide just by reading the posts. Yeah, I mean that's fair enough. I I must admit I've I've unfollowed the group um, and just dip in when I'm bored, so I don't see anything in my newsfeed because it was just every time I saw one of those posts, it was like oh, oh. Yeah, it was like lowest common denominator stuff. Like, if you believe in magic sky fairies, you have no right to live. But I'm a really intelligent atheist who's for peace and not in grouping people. It, it was all just yeah. rubbish. And that's one of them I, I would suggest is we can do better by saying, not saying, should I say things like magical sky fairy and things like that, because... I don't know what your purpose is with a conversation with a theist, but if all your with something like that, you're not going to get anywhere with them. You're going to have most of the onlookers look at you like you're a complete bellend. And the only people who are going to do it is other bellends who go, yeah, nice one. Imagine like the jocks in the locker room picking on uh, some some little nerd or something like that. And, you know, they're, they're patting each other on the back going, yeah, good one. <laughs> Cutting blow. Um, yeah, yeah, but I remembered what that post was about. I'm still seeing if I can find it in the group. It seems to be um, gone. But there was a theist who seemed to be trying to go for a gotcha or something like that. I don't really get why the question was fa fa phrased this way, but it was: Is atheism taught in universities, or is it still just That's discussed it. behind closed doors? Um, and Every single person on this post pretty much um, was going along the lines of how he was an idiot that didn't understand what atheism is. It's just the null claim. It's blah, 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 blah. All that. You random... can't teach it in universities because it's just a lack of belief in God. So the whole class would just be, do you believe in God? No. Well, then you're atheist. That's atheism. That that. that... That was most of the post, wasn't it? It was, pretty much. I mean, a couple of them, which I, I was grateful for, was like, sounds like no one's done a Philosophy 101 course. <laughs> and there are a few on there. Yeah. So it was encouraging that there were a couple of people. Now, um, I tried to engage with a few people. I spoke about, you know, in general, yeah, to most people, atheism is nothing more than that lack of belief in gods. That's a, a common definition. And that's all people think it is. <laughs> But there, it is also part of the philosophy of religion. And it, there is lots of material and it's arguments for and against the existence of gods. So, you know, that's part of the whole atheism thing. There's also work done on the best way to define atheism. There is actually a lot of different stuff. I mean, Dave, you've you've studied this. Um, you've got two philosophy degrees um so you you very very much know that atheism is taught in university as part of philosophy um yeah now this one particular guy i responded to and i said have you heard much about the philosophy of religion and what the fuck are you talking about so then i explained and i went through it and he just kept on like biting and being really aggressive and then some um young lady came in and also explained it um and she even said that i think it was she was filipino and she said in the philippines not only is it part of philosophy of religion but there is um like a a, a syllabus where we study just atheism so outside of the philosophy of religion i mean i know it's technically still part of philosophy of religion but it is a a module self-contained uh, yeah. yeah um so in that regard um it is very 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 much um oh yeah phil's going all oh, that conversation i actually took some screenshots of that one um and showed him ah. the beginning of that that conversation as it unfolded but uh phil you honestly have no clue how bad that conversation actually got he got more and more aggressive and the more people tried to say no no listen <laughs> there is an actual topic He'd jump in and he'd start misrepresenting everything anyone said um, and being incredibly heuristic. And it's like, oh, and I suppose we have two points of contention there, really. One is his overly aggressive behavior. He didn't know something. And rather than take a step back, read the links he'd been provided, consider that he didn't know what was was being said. He decided to to fight and go, rah, 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 you're all dickheads, blah, blah, blah. It's 
it was everyone else who was wrong and not him. But the other point there, and I think this goes for both theists and atheists, is to say, if you're going to get involved in a topic, try and get a little bit of understanding about it. So if someone posts a question like that, maybe do a quick Google search. Is atheism taught at universities? Oh, look, it is. I best not respond with my cutting remark, else I'll look stupid. Uh, and there are so many topics like this. One of the things that I, we always get annoyed with with creationists, where they try and talk about evolution, but they haven't got any understanding of the scientific side. They've only got their incredibly twisted biblical side of it. And it's like, OK, listen, I understand you don't accept it, but at least learn about it so we can have a conversation on level and tell me why you don't accept these bits. Don't just go, well, my pastor says, God says, Bible says. Actually learn the topic and go, right, these are the reasons I don't actually agree with it. So I think it's something that um, both atheists and theists need to do, spend more time looking into the topic. And I suppose the third thing there is, if you do happen to make a comment like that and someone goes well actually there is a bit more to it than that again take a step back and go okay let me have a look into this maybe i'm wrong yeah. there's nothing wrong with being wrong as long as you learn from it i mean shit i've made so many mistakes and thankfully <laughs> none of them have been the end of me but i've learned from at least most of the ones in my adult life I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned from about 5% of my mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as, as Philip says, he doesn't even mind if people don't learn these things. All I ask is that you don't scream about how right you are if you haven't learned it. It's, it's very yeah. true, because like, there's so many topics. There are times when we definitely think we know more than we do. Um, and we can be quite confident because we don't know how much we don't know. But we need that bit where someone says, oh, well, this is wrong because of this. You take a step back. I think, I, Philip, even the other day um, where someone was having a conversation about logic and I went, I, say, I even said to you, oh, hang on, he might be right here. And then I started looking some stuff up and, I'd, and I responded to him going, hang on, can you just clarify this point for me? And the guy actually turned round and fair play to him went, oh, no, no, I suppose you're right. It's just bad practice. It's not invalid. It was a, a, a logic thing. But it was the fact that the conversation could have gone differently. I could have put my foot down and gone, no, I'm definitely right. But I thought, fuck, I could be wrong here. I know I don't know enough about this topic. I've got a very basic understanding. I've got more of an understanding from a programmer's perspective, which means... I find logic relatively easy, but there are lots of different bits in it. When people say certain things or certain symbols, I go, right, I have to look this up. I don't know what this symbol means. Uh, and I'm quite a lot of the time I go, oh, this is just an alternative symbol for this other symbol I use or something. I still do. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, I mean, I know we say Wikipedia is not an amazing source and it's not, but it's a good start. And actually there's a list of logic symbols in Wikipedia that, are all valid and sound. <laughs> yeah. I love I myself. mean, the one thing about that guy as well is, like you said, people presented him with links. One of them was the Aberdeen University. Um, and I presented him with one, I think it was the University of Austin or something like that. And it was actually by Anthony Magnabosco running the course. And the guy turned around and said, well, that's not evidence. <laughs> Anthony Magnabosco wouldn't teach atheism i've read his books i know what he's about um anthony magnabosco teaches us to kick the ass and that's it oh and he also made the claim that he'd said to do it he did it with the socratic method and i remember you saying oh, yeah, if that's your understanding using... of the socratic method then i think you need to spend some time learning what the socratic method actually is yeah. i mean to be honest i'm completely ignorant of who that guy even is but uh i, I will the defer to you guy well, he's the guy, Anthony Mag Magnabosco is the guy that started street epistemology. Oh, right. Yes. So, yeah. The, so we had the, the conversation about um, about him and street epistemology, actually, didn't we? Um, With Ozzy. Yeah. And how it, street epistemology is not exactly the whole Socratic method. We did bring it up with Ozzy, but we actually spoke about it um, 
in our our Mino um, episode yeah. as well, I think, and how it's yeah, street epistemology is basically just half of the Socratic method. You're just tearing someone down for no apparent reason, rather than searching for truth in the conversation. You're just making them doubt what they know. Yeah, you're just asking them to justify and going, see, you can't really justify it. And then that's the end of the conversation and they're expected to go away and think more about their beliefs. Yeah. Whereas the Socratic method is more two way. Yeah. Now we've got here. Now let's look what for the truth that we can find within it. And yeah. Yeah. Building up as well as taking down. I mean, you do have that bit where you take everything down and strip everything back to the, the finest details. Um, but then you build on it from there, don't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, that guy wasn't even really doing street epistemology because he wasn't asking us questions about what we believed and how we justified them. He was just saying, you're wrong. You're idiots. Yeah. How can atheism be taught in university? You're idiots. Yeah. That's an even that's not street epistemology. <laughs> street epistemology is asking questions about what people believe and why they believe it. <laughs> uh, Opie's just said one claimed Steve McRae. Uh, is a Christian. Um, so yeah, on, on Twitter today, just before I came online, um, actually, sorry, just reading the chat and going, oh yeah, I remember that. So um, I don't know if you've seen uh, Philosophy Grove. Um, seems to remind no. me of someone else that used to be on Twitter. Um, again, from, from the theistic side, I find him quite antagonistic with the average atheist. And I don't find the way he interacts with atheists any good. He's like, oh, new atheist, me lucky belief. He da, da, da. It's all very condescending and patronizing. Again, this sort of aggressive behavior that's not actually going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get the atheists who probably are wrong in the particular conversation that you're having, where if they're saying they only lack belief or anything like that, um, or they're, you know going along the lines of, of scientism or anything. I mean, I understand the conversations he's having with them and they're conversations that do need to be had, but the way he goes about it is so ag aggressive um, that he doesn't get anywhere with any of them. And someone today on um, on Twitter accused him of being Steve McRae. It's one of his stock puppets as a sock puppets as a pre-supper. And it was like, oh, okay. From the way they act and the, the things they say, yes, they have a couple of things in common, but they are actually very, very different people. Um, and I genuinely don't think they are the same person. Obviously, I can't prove it. There's no way I can definitely prove it. But I think these assertions that, you know, you're just someone else. And I mean, to be honest, there's there's another one that we can bring up is the whole guilt by association fallacy and the, uh, and the, the, the genetic fallacy as well. Um, because I agree with Steve on some of his logical arguments and because I've got quite a good rapport with Steve and I don't get into the same sort of conversations with him that uh, other atheists do, um, people will just assume that we're part of his legion or something like that and discount we what we said. Sorry? We got called minions yesterday. Yes, we did. We did. Um, which was, was quite funny. Um, yeah, so that, that conversation yesterday, uh, that was... I can remember the people in it and I can remember what happened, but I can't remember what the original conversation there was either. Uh, um, I don't know. I jumped in. It was something to do with arguing Steve had given his wasp arguments logical proofs. Uh, yes, something no, like that. so yeah, you're close to that. It was basically saying that a week. So Steve put in a, 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 a weak atheist is the same um, psychologically as an ag agnostic. Changed my mind. That was. Basically, it, there was it was a lot more verbose because Steve can be a bit more verbose, <laughs> puts in yeah. a bit too much detail at times, and um, I think he likes stirring the pot sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I think everybody does. Yeah, it's got to be done from time to time. Um, I save it for the family, so you know. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, and the first person that responded to it basically was a bit of a non-response. Um, seemed to go a little bit off topic. And again, it's I got involved with the conversation and was just talking about things um, and about how him and someone else on this thread said to uh, you and me that we needed to go and st- study logic and epistemology. So my no, question- he said it to you and Steve. Oh, okay. And I jumped in and said, "Well, I've got a BA and a master's. Does that count as having taken intro courses?" Yeah. And, and then he, he went, went, "No, your yeah, your argument from authority won't work here." And it was like that wasn't even an argument from authority. All he said was, "Does that count as enough to for you to realize that we've done a little bit, or at least?" Dave has done more than an intro course. Um, But of course, yes, once you've then done that, no, that's not good enough. Okay, so he's ahead of you. I started asking simplistic questions like, okay, so what are the three um, epistemic answers to a proposition then? Let's, Let's go from there. And they just wouldn't answer. Everything was a dodge, a dive. And it was just like, why are you getting involved in a conversation like this? And the three of us got labeled as trolls. Uh, and Dave and I were labelled as minions through it. And you're just like, really? I hate the word troll and how it's used. Because a troll is supposed is basically someone who's going in and saying things to intentionally wind someone up. Now, trying to have a cordial conversation should not come down to someone going, no, you're a troll. Just because I disagree with you, just because I've shown you maybe that you don't know as much as you think you do, doesn't make me a troll. Um, I have done my fair amount of trolling back in the day. Um, I don't do it anymore because I don't see the point. Occasionally I might stick a knife in and twist it because it's occasionally amusing and someone's pissed me off. But, you know, that's a negative behaviour of mine that I try to subdue as much as possible. Um, But sometimes people just deserve it. (laughs) Yeah. It's the fact that I live under a bridge and eat billy goats that makes me a troll. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that is a, a, another common thing that we say. Uh, we see people say the second that, hey, LB, nice to see you and Josiah as well. Um, so that is another thing. Oh, and uh, Otangelo, hello as well. Um, so that is another thing that we see people. The second that you hear someone disagree with you, um, they turn it into insults or accuse you of trolling or they dismiss you like, OK, boomer or one of those particular things. Um, I I had it in um, uh, a, co- a conversation in a debate group the other day, and this is one that I, I experience as a man um, from women, is someone had got something completely wrong about what a belief was, I think it was. And I said, oh, well, just, just so you know, a belief is actually this. And that was it. I was mansplaining. Um, and then I think Andy actually joined in the conversation as well and, you know, sort of turned in, oh, you're mansplaining too. No, you just have been shown that you, you don't have the knowledge. So this is this is what happens. Dismissive words like mansplaining and troll and boomer. Don't get me wrong. These are all valid things to say at certain times. But just because someone disagrees with you, um, just because someone shows you that you don't have particular knowledge in certain areas, it doesn't actually um, mean that that is. Um, oh, you're here for real now. Nice one, Greg. Um, <laughs> um, oh, Greg, maybe it is one of your sons. <laughs> Wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> they just didn't know. <laughs> um, so again, that that is a, an, another one. So so far, we've got the. the the, the, the proneness to fallacies, people insulting rather in, than engaging in conversation, people dodging rather than engaging in conversation, people getting angry when they're shown that they don't have um, the knowledge, people not spending the time to actually look into the topics that they are discussing. And that's another one that really frustrates me. I mean, how many times have we gone into a conversation with someone about morality or beliefs or knowledge or anything like that? And they've got this really warped idea and they've not looked into it at all. Um, again, it's it's another 
point of contention for us there. Um, another one I see Pete, both atheists and theists doing is getting the burden of proof wrong. Um, very, very, very regularly. Um, I've found that many um, atheists on the internet are so quick to say, prove it, sometimes before anyone has even made a claim. Um, they think that if you hold a belief, then you actually have to prove that belief true. Otherwise, it's irrational, and that's not exactly how epistemic justification works. Um, they expect it in every conversation where someone says something like, oh, well, you know, I, I thank God for this. Oh, you thank God. Prove God exists. Like, yeah. really? Like, that's completely pointless. They're not in a debate. They're not trying to convince you that God exists. They believe it, and they feel that God has helped them out on something. I think they're wrong, but do you know what? If they if they believe it and they're not hurting anyone, what what does it matter? I'm not gonna jump in with a thousand memes going and prove it. Um so so that is something that we atheists tend to get wrong. But on the theistic side, there there is that shifting of burden of proof that does happen as well. They feel that they don't have to support theirs because God is self-evident, therefore I don't have to justify myself. It's the same, it's the equivalent of that I only lack belief so I don't have to justify myself. Well, God is self-evident, so I don't have to justify myself. You know? Yeah. And the whole debate me thing as well, I've seen that happen from theists. Um, they'll go into a stream and just say, you must debate me now where you're a coward. I think I saw it happen to Chesh not long ago. I think on when she was discussing the thread with Philip, um, the Twitter thread with Philip, there, there was somebody that jumped in and he was like, oh, do you dare debate me now, Chesh? I'm here. I'm in the stream. I'll come on and we'll have a debate. And when she just ignored him, because what else are you going to do? It's, it, that's not what the stream's about. He started calling her a coward and things like that. Uh, and that that it's similar kind of behavior from both sides, depending on the arrogance of the person, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Um that is definitely, definitely something incredibly frustrating. And and, and along those lines as well, correcting someone and then not taking on board what you're saying as well. Um, if you're in a, a debate or a conversation or anything like that. I mean, Aaron Ra, for example, has been corrected so many times on the definition of faith. I mean, I'm not even getting into the rocks because fuck that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but he's been corrected on the definition of faith so many times where it comes from the Greek pistis, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, look it up, pistis. Um, and, and and that's what it means. But he still hammers on with his definition because his definition supports his argument better but that's not how anyone really uses it that's only how um atheists use it uh and again that can be said the same for for theists when they go on about how oh you know when you you correct them um with certain things again like like evolution uh and things like that the evidence behind it uh you could say the same about anti-vaxxers and the evidence that's provided to them on uh vaccine efficacy and safety um greg says that uh he's been in the conversation like that right now and he had to walk away i think that is the best thing to do actually it's something i struggle with walking away when i'm in one of those conversation um because i feel tied into it this once i I get I get caught in a sunk cost. The second I put enough effort into a conversation, I feel like oh I've, I can't give this up. I can't give this up. Now I am getting a little bit better, just a little bit better um, <laughs> at walking away. But it's definitely, 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 um, well, it is the best thing to do. You, you, more atheists should get into the habit of just walking away from a discussion, but there's that eagerness <laughs> to win from a lot of people, from both theists and atheists, you know. Yeah. But me, well, it's like, bye. I think that's that's like we said at the beginning, though, isn't it? If if you go into a, a, a conversation looking for an opponent and fighting, you're never going to get anywhere. Um, but quite often we go into a conversation looking for a, a partner and we want a discussion, but you get someone regardless of whether they're a theist or an atheist or some other ontological position. Um, although generally it's not the other ontological positions that get are in fight mode. Um, 
getting into that mode and they're trying to get you into this battle. And yeah, it's, I think that's one that I still, I need to learn early on when someone is just right. I shouldn't continue this conversation. Um, I need to walk away. I need to be better. And if they want to start calling me a coward or anything like that, then, then that's fine because I don't actually care what anyone might say about me. Um, so from that perspective, it, it really, really, really doesn't matter. For me, it's just the fact that I've put effort into the conversation. I've spent a lot of time explaining something and this person still doesn't seem to be getting even the very, most basic premise. Um. <laughs> yeah. Eat more weed before getting into a discussion. Then you'll yeah. be far too lazy when it goes bad. That's a good idea. Um, so obviously whilst Dave and I are having this discussion about various discussions, so we're discussing discussions again, Dave. <laughs> it's what we do. <laughs> um, if you guys have anything that you want, want to, um, drop in and tell us of any other, uh, particular bad behaviors that you see, um, I can think of another one. It's a lot easier for me to think about the bad behaviours of um, fellow atheists than it is to think about the ones from theists, because I think I spent so long having discussions with theists and I've sort of pushed so much of that to the back of my mind. I don't get into many conversations um, with the fundamentalist type theists anymore. And the ones I do have conversations with, I end up making friends with because we agree about a lot of stuff and we tend to leave the, the religion thing over there and just focus on the good shit. Um, but the the atheist one is the not evidence. Uh, Andy and I recently have got into a few conversations. So like that group and a couple of the others that I've been in recently, there have been post after post about how uh, the Bible is not evidence and this is not evidence and that is not evidence. And even if you explain, well, evidence is indicative, something indicative of a conclusion. Um, so anything that indicates a conclusion is technically evidence. It doesn't mean it's good evidence. It doesn't mean it's strong evidence. It doesn't mean it's convincing. It doesn't mean you can pass it on, but it is still evidence. So uh, the Bible technically is evidence for the Christian faith and the Vedas is evidence for the Hindu faith uh, and the Quran's the evidence for the Islamic faith. It's not good evidence. It's full of holes and errors. There's contrary claims. You know, it says, well, this one says it's the only God and this one says there's other gods. So, oh, you know, you've got contrary evidence there, you, you know, but it doesn't mean it's not evidence. It just means it's bad evidence. And I think that we should actually focus on that. And generally, I think what most atheists actually mean is there isn't any scientific evidence. But then it's like, well, yeah. okay, why do you want scientific evidence for a metaphysical being? Uh, yeah. And you go, well, what evidence would satisfy you? Scientific evidence. Okay, but what evidence? What actually would you look for? Like, give me something. Tell me something that would convince you that God exists. Verifiable, repeatable evidence. Right. <laughs> it's a weird sort of hard evidentialist stance that they probably don't take in their day to day lives. Yeah. Like if you needed hard evidence for the bus getting there at such and such a time, you'd never go for a bus. <laughs> exactly. Or similarly, crossing a bridge. Or starting your car in the morning. Yeah. You know, it's you. You have no evidence. Your car will definitely start, so it would be an irrational belief to believe your car is going to start. If we do things based on irrational beliefs, we're irrational. So, therefore, starting your car in the morning would be irrational for a hard evidentialist. Yeah. <laughs> and I think most of them, when you bring out examples like that, they they almost accept them. Um, but don't at the same time, you know, and it's, if you think about experiences, for example, you know, I could give you an anecdote. That's anecdotal evidence. That doesn't mean not evidence. It just means it might not be something that convinces you. Um, so I could talk about how I feel about my wife, or I could talk about how I like the taste of chocolate. Um, 
neither of those would necessarily be evidence for you that you would like the taste of chocolate or even just like my wife. You know, none of those things would necessarily convince you, but there are evidence to me because they indicate a conclusion to me. Oh, I like chocolate. Oh, I love my wife because of the way I feel, because of the way they taste. Um, and there are other problems and other experiences that you might have as well that lead you to a conclusion. But they're not necessarily transferable. They're not necessarily repeatable. They, you can't get necessarily scientific evidence out of them. It doesn't mean if that you've you're got a headache. To... Yeah, if you've got a headache, you can't give evidence to somebody else that you've got a headache because that's an inner experience. The only evidence you have that you have a headache is the headache. And when you've got a headache, you might try a few things that you know work because from previous experience, maybe drinking some more water, maybe having some paracetamol or some ibuprofen. Um, having a maybe, wank. Having a wank, having a hit on a bong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> whatever works for you. Um, and again, just because it works for you might not mean that it works for anyone else as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean... Greg says beer is greater than chocolate. I'd have to agree with you. No. I, I would definitely have to agree with you there. But just because we think that, that's not enough. And we're agreeing. So actually, there's two of us. There's two data sets where the, you and I are agreeing. So there's some anecdotal evidence. There's two anecdotes of people saying beer is greater than chocolate. But something like taste um, is a preferential thing. It's purely subjective. So even with that... Um, Dave disagreed. There you go. Just because we agree doesn't mean that Dave would agree with that. It doesn't mean it's not evidence. It just means that it's not necessarily good evidence. Yeah. But I also hate the dodge of, well, God is self-evident and trees are evidence. And it's like, okay, so what are trees evidence of? As far as I'm concerned, when someone points to a tree, I say that's evidence of the evolution of the tree over millions of years. Um, I guess that it indicates to them that there's something. <laughs> but it goes back to previous arguments and it ties in and they think that it needs a design. <laughs> I think that's a, a shift about uh, uh, what e evidence is, really. Um, but, you know. We could always do a future stream on evidence. Um, have like a discussion about evidence itself. Yeah, I mean, I think there's... I did a post as well, didn't I? Dirty words. And in that, I listed 13 or 14 different types of evidence and how strong or weak they are. Um, so it might be good to actually embellish on that one um, a little bit more. Um, because I did... I did uh, that was a quick run-through in the article. But we could actually talk through all those different types of evidence and say right this is why so we could hold up a bible and go through the bit the spiel that we just did and say there you go um we could say do the comparison of why spider-man isn't the same as the bible but maybe vidas is the same as the bible yeah Eat. see i really hate that one. Ah, uh, yeah the spider-man argument yeah yeah uh, well you explain why I've already explained well, it before. <laughs> yeah. It, the argument that if the Bible is proof of God, then Spider-Man is, uh, New York is, or the, you know, the Spider-Man comics are proof of Spider-Man. Or Harry Potter is evidence of wizards. You know, that kind of daft comparison. It doesn't work because the Bible is not written. Maybe it was. 2,000 years ago. Maybe it was written as fiction. It was written as parables and tales, sort of like Aesop's fables. And it mixed in actual history. But as we understand it now, it is not written in that sense. It is not written as fiction. It is written as if giving an account of the times. It is written as if it is a historical record. Spider-Man and Batman and Harry Potter are not we know they're written by authors to be fiction. So it's not a like for like comparison. It isn't. And a common objection I actually get to that one is how do you know how they wrote it? Maybe they wrote it as fantasy. Maybe they never intended for anyone to believe it. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Russell's teapot. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. it. When you bring up something like that, I've had that argument in debate phase. Somebody says, well, how do you know Batman? You know, how do you know that Bob Gale didn't write Batman? He saw Batman, so he wrote about it. It's just that he didn't say it was the truth. And it's like, well, welcome to arguing like a Christian now. <laughs> So eager to defend a point that's bad that they will literally say anything. And I think it's kind of a weird behavior. Yeah. And this comes back to going back into burden of proof, like we were talking earlier. It's just reminded me, what you said there reminded me of someone going, I only lack belief, so therefore I don't have to justify my position. And taking them through, you know, justifying position every position requires justification no it's the null hypothesis it means i don't believe the claim so what are your reasons i don't have to justify myself well you don't have to but if you want to hold a rational position you have to have reasons that are a bit better than i don't believe you um (laughs) yeah i mean they're not wrong when they say that they don't have an obligation in discourse to prove to you that they have rational reasons um but when they say that I don't need justification, that's clearly wrong. Yeah. It, it's. They don't have to justify it to on. us. They have to justify it to themselves, at least. And if you can justify it to yourself, does it matter if you share it with others? Yeah, exactly. Um, but if you're going to say my belief is rational, you have to be able to at least justify that it's rational to yourself at, at the very least. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> that person ended up that. Made, made assertion after assertion as well. Um, <laughs> uh, I think they they that was actually in our group, and they ended up getting booted out. Uh, I didn't boot them. Martin jumped in and went. <laughs> yeah. It can be quite harsh like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's needed though. <laughs> well, I mean, here's one thing to think of. In a situation like that, um, where they jump into a discussion and they put forth their claim that they don't need to justify it or it doesn't need any justification, they're sort of entering into a discourse in a sort of, not a contract, but sort of you take a reasonable assumption that they're jumping into the conversation in order to have the discussion. So when they make the claim and you say, well, can you show me why? And they say, well, I don't have to do anything like that. Yeah. It, it should it should be expected that if you jump into a discussion, somebody's going to ask you for a back and forth or yeah. to justify what you say. And they and actually I mean, went... Think, Sorry. I, I was just going to say, if you think about the popular atheist thing... If you make a claim, you have the burden of proof and you have to justify it in a conversation. Well, isn't that what isn't saying I don't need to prove any, I don't need to justify my belief. Isn't that a claim in and of itself? So I went through a number of those in that particular conversation um, saying you've just made a claim there. So by your own words, you need to back that up. You also made this claim. You need to back that up. By what you're saying, you know, you know, it's like, no, I'm not doing it because of the null hypothesis. I'm not talking about your lack of belief here. You've made this claim, this claim and this claim. So please provide evidence to support them. No, I don't need to do that. So you don't need to. I'm not saying you need to. But by your own words, if you're making a claim, you need to provide evidence. So please provide the evidence. It's like, I don't need to in the same way that I don't need to justify that I lack belief in Santa and unicorns. And I was like, hang on, hang on. Do you honestly only lack belief in Santa? Are you sure you don't believe Santa does not exist? That no, I only lack belief. It's like, oh my God. (laughs) Really? (laughs) If you only lack belief in Santa Claus, you're not rationality correctly. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Um, Anyone out there that in in mythological creatures such as that, like unicorns and Santa and leprechauns, if you only lack belief, like I facepalm. <laughs> well, I've heard to some a response to something like that. 
um, where you say, well, you know, why do you only lack belief in unicorns? Why do you not believe that they're not real? They'll say something like, well, how do I know that there isn't a creature resembling a unicorn millions of light years away on some planet that we don't know about? And the problem with that counter argument is then you're not talking about unicorns because unicorns have a very specific definition and relate to the earth. They're, you know, creatures believed to have been inhabiting the earth, not billions of light years away, or they're creatures that inhabit some fantasy realm in some fantasy book that we just share a kind of common mythology with. So it, you're talking about a different thing. Yeah. I, I've even had it before where they said, well, what if they did actually exist once? And so when they've been in books were well, because people actually saw them and they could be real uh, and they just, you know, might be on a hidden Island somewhere or not here anymore. And you're like, okay. I mean, you're stretching it, but okay. But if we look through the fossil layer, there's been no records of unicorns. They only appear in mythological works, um, in things that are labeled as fantasy. Um, they're, they're never uh, really claimed as being true creatures. They're always in works of fantasy. I think that's enough for me to start saying, well, I believe that they don't exist. Um, there's also... Um, times in the past where words like unicorn have been used it's actually it was a rhinoceros because it has a single horn um and people just misunderstood what it was and the paintings and drawings were so bad that someone thought it was you know a a horse with a horn when actually it's a different creature so uh, some explanations for unicorns have been explained through naturalistic terms of a misunderstanding of what the unicorn actually was. It was a rhinoceros. There you go. Um, so there's even natural explanations. There's enough justification to believe unicorns don't exist. Um, so I should probably catch up with um, the, the chat. I do apologize, guys, for, for blathering on. Um, um, hang on a minute. I'll be back in two seconds. I just need to go grab something. Okay. Well, whilst you go do that, do you want me to carry on chatting to the chat? Yes, please. Okay. Because uh, they were awesome. They are. <laughs> so uh leon uh oh god i'm 20 minutes behind in the chat i do apologize um it's uh leon says internet atheists be like oh your favorite flavor of ice cream is vanilla prove it but that that is it you're right there so that's one of those ridiculous things i've actually released an article recently called um how justified are you and it's talking about how you know in in day-to-day -day conversation you um don't treat everybody in the same way you know it, what did you do at the weekend oh, i went to the beach prove it you don't do that you know so um how did your weekend go oh well i was having a bit of trouble but um thankfully god helped me prove it no you wouldn't do that you wouldn't do that in a conversation um if someone's trying to convince you then maybe but even then when you're discussing beliefs you you know, it's not to prove it true. It's just to justify it as rational, especially with something like a metaphysical play, uh, a metaphysical claim where there is nothing physical necessarily. Um, so, yeah, uh, good point on that one. Um, uh, LB, as, as you say, uh, why should I? You're not obligated to justify it to anyone. You're not obligated. I mean, if you're in a conversation with someone and you're trying to convince them of something, then, yeah, you have an obligation, I would say. Um, and if you're in a formal debate or or something like that, then, again, I'd say you have an obligation to justify your position. Could you imagine a formal debate, um, people taking either side, and one person's entire argument was... I think that we should treat everyone equally. And that was their entire argument. Well, why do you think that? I don't have to justify myself. <laughs> the formal debate wouldn't go very far. Uh, now, I, there's lots of good reasons for treating everyone equally. But in that sort of setting, you do have that obligation there. And I think when you get involved in a conversation and you start making assertions and things like that you start to give yourself um 
an obligation. So if someone jumps in to a conversation and says, no, atheism is, atheism is only a lack of belief or God is self-evident, um, then all of a sudden they're making claims there that they should really start trying to justify because they're putting themselves in a situation. And as Dave mentioned, it's sort of like a social contract. They didn't have to get involved in that conversation. Um, it's a bit different to um, just a general uh, conversation of, oh, you know, uh, I, I had a really nice bourbon, right, uh, a little while ago. Dave's not going to suddenly turn around and go, prove it. <laughs> well, it's gone. <laughs> well, you can't, there's no such, you can't prove it. There's no such thing as a good bourbon. <laughs> Shut up, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Greg has one say, I'm sure we use word, the, the words faith differently. However, if by faith you mean I trust science more than mythology from ancient texts and primitive uh, blood cults, you're absolutely correct. So was that a quote from um, someone that you, you, uh, you got there, Greg? Um, it's interesting. I, I, that's, that's a good one, though. Faith is one of those words um, I mentioned earlier. Um, essentially, faith just means trust. Um, so we have faith in science. We have faith that we'll wake up tomorrow. Um, I have faith that Dave will turn up for the the, the streams. Um, <laughs> well, I guess it would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I do think that there is... Uh, oh, that was your response to the sky about faith over the past two days that you had to walk away from. Um, sorry, Greg, I'm trying to, to catch up with that. Um, the, the, the chat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think faith is one of those words where because atheists in general are so resistant to the word faith that we will reject its use completely. But equally, because theists like to shoehorn in, I will say there is a bit of a difference between a faith, a religious faith, than just the standard use of the word faith. Um, a bit. <laughs> um, well... Sorry, Generally, when the theist is talking about faith, when they say, I have faith in God, or I have faith God exists, they're using it in the sense like trust. I have faith God exists. I trust that the arguments and the beliefs that I have are correct about God. And when they say, I have faith in God, what they're saying is they trust God exists and that God is working in their favor. You know, that kind of thing. Definitely. The thing, the thing that comes back is when we could turn around and say, you know what? I have faith in the scientific method as in, I trust the scientific method. The problem there is then the theist will go, ah, ha, ha, you have faith too. No, no, no. You're just as bad as me. And I can yeah, understand see, that's a terrible. Yeah. It's a terrible argument because obviously the scientific method, um, uh, is something that does work. It's demonstrable that it works. It is built on a number of different philosophical principles, etc. But essentially, there is a lot of good. So having faith in the scientific method or having faith that a bridge will not collapse as you go over it isn't exactly the same as having faith in a metaphysical being. Yes, it's the same sort of trust. I... From that perspective, the word is the same, but it's when, you know, trust in the metaphysical is a bit different to the trust in something that's a little bit more demonstrable um, and testable and based on, you know, rules of induction and deduction and so on and so forth. So from that, I think we atheists need to stop being so adverse to the word faith, except that we do have faith in things and explain to theists why it's a different faith yes it's the same thing yes it's trust but why faith in the metaphysical is different to something a little bit more demonstrable yeah i mean in some ways you get those that say a belief is when you think something is true without evidence and then they turn around and say faith is belief in things without evidence faith is you know yeah. So they're basically saying faith and belief are exactly the same thing. They're, yeah. they're using redundant terminology 
it's designed specifically to outgroup and show, well, that person uses these things. They're not in my group. Therefore, they're irrational. And we define them in that way. Yeah, which is another good point to bring up. I think both theists and atheists can be far too tribal. Um, yeah. Even within themselves. Um, I think I th that's why there's so many different de denominations, because someone's interpreted a verse slightly differently and they've been shunned. And so they've gone, well, fine, I'll start my own church then, because I think my interpretation's better. Um, you know, <laughs> And the same thing can happen to atheists. And you go, well, actually, you know, I think we do have to justify our position as atheists. You're a theist troll. But, right. Because <laughs> I've said something a little bit different. OK. <laughs> yeah. Um, LB says, guys, would most lack theists be empiricists? Uh, quick answer. Yes. They'd be evidentialists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Leon says, I need to ask if theism is the proposition that at least one God exists, or if it's the epistemic attitude that the position God, God's existence is true. I keep getting different definitions. Okay. So the way, the way to think about it is if you have something with an ism at the end of it, that's talking about the overall concept, right? So uh, think about communism for example, and a communist. A communist is someone that ascribes to communism. Um, so theism is commonly described as the belief that at least one thing like a god exists. But let's go with a belief that God exists. But it's not an actual belief because a concept cannot hold beliefs. So what it's talking about is something believed, the propositional content of a belief. So that propositional content is God exists. So that is why theism is the proposition. It's, it's a theist that believes the proposition to be true. So theism is not an active belief. Theism can also be used to describe um, when you go through things like philosophy of religion, like we were talking about earlier, all the arguments for a God existing. So atheism, uh, the, the common use in, in the philosophy of religion is the negation of the proposition of theism. Um, so God does not exist. And an atheist is one that believes that tr true. But it's also all the arguments for God's not existing. Now, uh, I'm not in the mood to get into a conversation about debating different definitions. People will define bit, uh, different things um, differently. I think we watched a, a stream with Stephen Law last night and someone brought, brought that conversation up as well. Um, and he even said, you know, it, it depends what definitions you're using. I mean, um, some people use agnostic, some people used um, weak atheists. They're basically the same position. Um, I'm a strong atheist myself. And someone says, so, you know, what what definition do you think is best? He said, well, I think the only atheist is is really the, the strong atheist because the agnostic is a different position. But again, it comes down to the definition that you use. And I think that's a great way to put it. He is actually using common language on the Internet because he knows that he's got a better message than arguing over the definition. And I think that that's a really good way to put it, you know, and I, I recently have been doing um, a few posts where I've said whether you're a lack of belief atheist or you're a belief gods don't exist atheist. um this is how you do. You could describe this, like our, our recent one about justifying the positions. And even then, some of the responses you get, no, atheism is only a lack of believing gods. And you're like, these words are defined uh, differently. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you about the conversation that got deleted, because um, it, it relates to that. I'll, I'll tell you about that later. I mean, you can jump in now if you want. I'm just going through the chat, but they can wait. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, oh, um, Leon, hopefully that, that answers your question. I mean, um, it, where, with an ism, it is, it is the concept, and an ist is someone that believes the concept. And actually, 
with most definitions with something that's an ist it's a person that believes in or ascribes to a you know particular concept um so that's why an, another reason why the whole rocks are atheist thing doesn't actually work because <laughs> rocks aren't ists um <laughs> well to some degree that lack of belief um makes atheism and atheist the same term rather than different terms if atheism is just a lack of belief and an atheist is a lack of belief then they are in essence the same thing they are identical because they both contain the same properties yeah so it wouldn't be any more wrong to say i am atheism than it would be <laughs> to say i am atheist <laughs> but if we were to think about that in terms of the way that we speak you would say what do you mean you're atheism atheism yeah. isn't just a lack of belief it's all these other things that come to mind when we use the term atheism uh, that's a very good point. And I think there's, there's that's one of the so many redundant terms being used. And when you spend more time taking uh, the time to understand them, like agnostic atheist, uh, with, especially with someone that defines an atheist as someone that lacks belief um, and an agnostic as someone that lacks knowledge. If you already lack belief, you're already saying you lack knowledge because knowledge is a subset of belief. So if you've got no belief, you've got no knowledge. So realistically, how's an agnostic atheist anywhere different from a typical lack theist? And uh, but anyway, we're getting too much into that conversation again. <laughs> but you wanted to to tell us about that conversation that you had that got deleted. Oh yeah, um, the guy rage quit and deleted the whole thread. Um. Remember that guy I had the discussion with um, about determinism? Oh, Remember? yes. Yeah. So I think it was Peter something. We subscribed to his channel. Yeah. Well, he runs a group. And in the group, he made a post that, that was, how do you define atheism? And he put a couple and allowed people to fill in their own. And one of the options was belief there are no gods or belief God does not exist. And of course, that's the one that I chose because that's generally how I define atheism. Mm -hmm. And the, it had been there for a good four or five days. Um, and this morning, I sat down with my cuppa before going to before starting on my assignment, and I get this notification saying you've been tagged in a post. So I go to it, and it's that post, and it's this guy having a bit of a drop on. And it was like he tagged every single person that answered atheism is defined as a belief God does not exist in that post and said, you are all factually incorrect and know nothing about atheism. <laughs> so I got into it. I said, what do you mean by factually incorrect? And he said, you're just wrong. That's not what atheism is. Atheism is just a lack of belief in God. And I said, well, what is the fact that determines that, you know, give me the thing that makes it factually incorrect. And he said, words mean what they mean. You, you don't get to use words however you want to use them, which, you know, is, is wrong <laughs> to begin with. But I said, what if I could quote, what if I could give you a definition from academia Defining it in this way, would the academics be wrong or would you be wrong? And he said, what do you mean from academia? Academia is a website where academics post their papers. <laughs> There's nothing in that that argues for what the word atheism means. Well, that's also wrong Acad as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said academia is not a place. It's a website. That's crazy. So... Yeah, eventually the conversation moved on and I explained to him how words work and showed him that academia is the body of, you know, it's the collection of universities and educational facilities and the body of work and research and things like that that all go into describing the work done in by academics. It's academia. And I even posted a definition from a dictionary. And then I said, okay, you've seen all this now. So now tell me what 
uh, a fact is a statement what that has a ref- referent that you know refers to some state of affairs in reality that makes it a fact so what makes it a fact that the word atheism only means so and so he says well you have to get the definition from official sources um <laughs> there are official ways to use words in the english language so again i said well wh- who are these official people what makes an authority official on how a word should be used give me the fact that makes atheism just a lack of belief in god and he he then posted well i can see that you're only willing to stick your ears in your uh, your fingers in your ears and go la 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 and not listen to anything i say you are factually incorrect and you should go learn what atheism is bye and then i went to respond to him and he deleted the thread <laughs> Basically, he got shown to be wrong, couldn't defend it, and then thought, well, shit, okay. Rather than (laughs) just admit that I didn't know, I'm just going to zap the whole thing and walk away. (laughs) Oh, dear. Uh... (laughs) Oh, yeah, and he he told me I spoke like a five-year-old because I used the word academia. Well, I mean, uh, as as Leon says, uh, academia is an anime. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my hero academia it or is. something like that. Uh, my son likes that. He's cosplayed as the the main guy in that. Um... <laughs> I've never actually watched it. I just know it exists. No, I haven't either. But my friend Henry really, really, really likes it, and he's like, you know, if if there is one to get into, that's probably one of the better ones to get into. And it's like, I'd love to have the time to get into something like that but i'd love to have the time to read the books i want to read as well and i'd love to have the time to do a hell of a lot more i just don't have time for anything i feel like most Same. of the time um uh clever thunderstorm flesh that thinks hello and welcome i've not seen you in the chat room before thank you for stopping by and you say you suppose philosophy is a website too <laughs> <laughs> yes there probably is a website called philosophy oh yeah i wouldn't be surprised i mean there is the stanford encyclopedia of philosophy so you know um and, yeah. and it's got nothing to do with a university it's just a philosophy no. website there's no real you know academic philosophy ever done um because if it was it would be on academia.edu <laughs> yeah but the irony there that made me laugh is saying that there's no authority there and it's just like and they don't argue for that i mean there's um schweb dr Schweb Malik is that is that how you pronounce his last name Malik? He's Malik, got yeah, yeah, defining atheism and the burden of proof, um, right there, and it talks about agnosticism and all of that. So it, it, he's even wrong in what he's saying there. Not even the fact that he was wrong in the first place, but the follow-up stuff is wrong with as well. Um, so well, just... after Leon suggested Oppie's book, Atheism and Agnosticism, last week, I bought it and read it. I could go down and get that, and that's got atheism defined as, I believe, God does not exist. <laughs> well, but, you know, uh, uh, an atheist philosopher that does philosophy of religion has, you know, is no authority on the matter. No. Well, I was told that... By that guy, I was told that philosophy or religion is just a meaningly ter- meaningless term, and I can't use a meaningless term to justify the definition of another term. Right. Okay. And what <laughs> do you think atheism relates to? <laughs> I like a belief in God. Oh, right. And what's God part of? <laughs> Me, because I'm a pantheist. <laughs> um so catching up with the chat still sorry um lb says the bible is a very complex book that's loaded with many genres and literature yeah um that's one way to put it that's a very polite way to put it um i think there are benefits to certain things in the bible though um there's one thing that i maintain is probably the best thing in the bible um and possibly said by anyone anywhere um love thy neighbor 
um, and treat everyone as if they're your neighbour. And neighbour is more than just, uh, sorry, love is more than just a feeling. It's also a choice and acting on that choice, the way to behave. And I think if everybody treated everybody with this love and not just the feeling of love, but the actions of love, we'd be in a better place. And I do think there are lessons that you can get out of the Bible. I don't think that just because there is so much crap in it that we should discount absolutely everything. Um, you know, I'm sure even Ray Comfort says something correct once in a while. You know, I won't discount something just because Ray Comfort said it. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll take the time to understand it. And there's good shit in the Bible, too. There really is. Um, oh, now you I'm take be... that back about Ray Comfort. <laughs> yeah, true. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just because I have never seen Ray Comfort make anything make sense no poignant points ever or anything like that does not mean it wouldn't happen i only lack belief in ray comfort making good points okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure he's told his kids never to touch a hot stove so he he will have said some correct things yeah <laughs> and i'm half sure he can tell the time <laughs> but not years <laughs> yeah he, he's okay on the day-to-day -day stuff but yeah. <laughs> He's okay with the digital watch face. Um, so Greg says he is currently watching the NYU Open Course Lectures on Ancient Israel by Daniel Fleming. Um, interesting. Uh, claiming nothing in the Bible is true is stupid. No, you're right. I do think that there are things in the Bible that are definitely true. Um even if they're a stretch of the truth, it's it's like Jesus mythicism. That's something that the Christian uh, atheists need to stop going on with is the Jesus mythicism, because at the end of the day, it is most likely that this character was based on someone. And there's enough, you know, with ancient history, it's really difficult to have evidence. And there's enough other sources and valid other sources, not the crap ones. To say, yeah, there probably was someone that this person was based on. Um, yeah, so you're right. Claiming nothing in the Bible is true is stupid. But equally, the flip side of that one for Christians um, saying that everything in the Bible is is true, um, especially. Um, what's it called? I've forgotten the word. Er inerrantists. Archaeology? No. Um, oh, inerrantists. Uh, yeah, biblical inerrant in inerrantists. They are... Uh, they're ridiculous because you can show them actual errors and they will find excuse after excuse after excuse and dodge and divert and then go, well, yeah, I mean, even the things with like bats being written as birds and they go, well, there wasn't a word for it then. And you're like, really? Was there not? <laughs> and uh, what you think a, a, an all powerful knowing God couldn't pass on this knowledge, the value of pi being off and you know all sorts um I, I've, I've gone through so many different issues within the bible but it doesn't mean that all of it is wrong it doesn't mean all of it is untrue it doesn't mean you can't learn things from it you can um and i think that people need to stop with this outlandish attack and it's like with the jesus mythicism forget the mythicism just go all right yeah let's just say there was a guy called jesus that existed Show me that he actually did the things he was claimed to, um, and it isn't just an exaggeration of a story. Because we've all told stories, and we've embellished on the story. And sometimes you, someone tells a fantastic story, and it gets embellished on and embellished on and embellished on. And it's like the things like when he healed someone, uh, someone's blindness. I mean, maybe they just had a bit of a gammy eye, and he put a poultice on them and cleaned the wound, and all of a sudden they could see again. And it wasn't actually curing someone of blindness. There's probably a naturalistic explanation for some of these I events. So... Don't take such an anti, um, anti Bible sort of, and discount it just because it's Bible. It's the same way of going discounting evidence. Yeah, I agree. Um, with the Jesus mythicist thing, accepting that there was a character, like you say, in no way gives rise to having to admit to the miracles or the rising of the you know, him rising from the grave, anything like that. Um, and if you want to look at stories getting exaggerated, 
we actually have quite a good living record of that in you know what the hadiths are when it comes to islam if you look at the hadiths you'll see that as stories of muhammad traveled his deeds got greater and greater and greater and he got nicer and nicer and nicer and you can actually see the progression of how he myths were formed around him and you can see it in real time so you can relate that back to the bible and see we might be missing the the sort of hadith element but the bible itself could be that hadith element and just the final stories all collected <laughs> yeah I, I mean that is what makes the most logical sense to to me um but there there is just this resistance to it within within the atheist community that they just have to discount everything no it's to do with religion boom and also oh this is one that really annoys me if you only lack belief why do you spend so much time arguing against religion and acting anti-theistically if you only lack belief um because if you only lack belief and you don't hold a positive belief then it seems a bit odd to spend all of your time trying to convince everybody else not to believe um <laughs> um I, I i could see that one though as sort of there are religions that cause harm and there's religious practices that cause harm so therefore we would do well to argue against those practices and those beliefs those specific even though ones. we don't believe it's false yeah. yeah um but Arguing that God is imaginary and then saying you only lack belief, what, there's a bit of a contradiction there. Yeah, because what is imaginary? Something without an objective reality, as in something that doesn't actually exist. But I only lack belief, but it doesn't exist. Uh, so do, is it imaginary or do you only lack belief? <laughs> Which is it? <laughs> yeah, that is yeah, a common I mean, contradiction. Yeah, Um Believing something is, is imaginary entails believing it's not real. But you'll see a lot of atheists who will say, I would never say God does not exist because then I have a burden of proof. Yeah. And I think one of the weird things is, is and you get a lot of religious people who think this as well. Um, they think that for you to believe something false, you must be able to 100% prove it's false. You must have some kind of Cartesian certainty that it is false in order for you to be able to rationally believe it's false. But the way our worldviews are formed and shaped, there can be many justifications from within those worldviews that give us cause to believe that something is false, even if it's not been proven false. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> I, I am trying to catch up on the chat, and obviously we've got new messages coming through that are relevant to the current conversation and old ones that I need to address. So I'm, a, <laughs> uh, I'm about half an hour behind now. We're getting further and further behind. I do apologize, folks. Um, but this there was... the problem when we have people smarter than us in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, as Opie says, naturalism is rubbing off on me. Oh, or is it just you, Opie? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, catching up on the chat as well. There are... Uh, yeah, so your example, um, Clever Thunderstorm, um, about uh, Robin Hood, you know, probably based on a real guy and stories getting exaggerated over time, etc. Um, you're you're very right there. That's that's the way a lot of the stories do tend to go. There is often a lot of basis in reality for how these things start. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are completely true, but it also doesn't mean that they're completely false just because some of it is seemingly obviously false um or you can point well, out some proper errors yeah um sorry there was something else i meant to say you know you're going on about how if, um the bible can't teach us anything you know people claiming it, it has nothing to teach us because everything it is false or made up um i mean even if the story of jesus is cut whole cloth myth if you think of something like Aesop's fables, there's nothing in those that are true. They're all made up, but there's a lot we can learn from them. Yeah, because they're good moral lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
or, or behavioral lessons in in some instances but uh, either way yeah so it doesn't need to be true um yeah but dave you don't know that they weren't based on something true <laughs> you can't prove it prove it prove it. you made a claim prove it <laughs> I... <laughs> Uh, Leon says, always going to remember the time someone argued atheism is a lack of a position. Was that Randolph? (laughs) (laughs) He argues that atheism is a a lack of position. Um, Yeah, hide the ball. Uh, Greg says, you know what pisses Lactheus off? When you say you sound like a creationist right now. Yes, that that is. When I've got to the point of a conversation where I've given up, I've gone... You're sounding much like a creationist right now. I even throw in a young earth creationist because there are some creationists that are, well, God did everything, but, you know, in the time scale that science says. Um, so I throw in the young earth creationist because it adds a little bit of uh, additional irrationality to the position. Um, but that's because I've got to a point where they're just, they're, they're fighting for their position. Um <laughs> uh sorry greg about taking santa away from you don't 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 worry don't worry your santa's real it's just everyone else's look at my beard i'm definitely santa (laughs) i thought you were satan i'm dyslexic (laughs) satan that's the one Uh, Philip says, you see a lot of confusion about knowledge versus belief. So, yeah, um, again, I think... There was a discussion today. Yes, there was. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we were both in that one, actually, weren't we? That yeah. that was one of the better discussions, although there were some other comments on it that were just ridiculous. Like um, someone turned around and went, a belief is based on bullshit and a knowledge and knowledge is fact. Uh, really yeah (laughs) i think somebody also said there's no difference between belief and knowledge and one other person said it's a troll question to ask a question like that and it's not do you know if you really don't know it's a good question and people conflate knowledge with things like information and facts and things that you know you know that it's different to what knowledge is there's a variety of theories of knowledge but essentially knowledge is a subset or type of belief a belief is just something you accept as true knowledge is something that you do accept as true and is true and you can justify your um, uh, the information and the understanding and everything about it. And, and it's not the same as just knowing some information. Um, the square root of 196 is 14. But that to you is just factual information unless you understand how square roots work. And once you understand how square roots work, you can then say you have knowledge of it because you understand the process. You can justify that and you can then use it to work out others. Um, don't mention maths. That's what my assignment was today. Oh, mathematical okay. modeling and pl- uh, scatter plotting and things like that. So no maths. My brain, yeah. my brain hurts. Oh, you need me to do your homework on that one, especially if it's in Excel. I'm all right at that. <laughs> Fortunately, not. Oh. <laughs> um. But yes, you're right, Philip. People do have a lot of confusion about knowledge and belief and not even just the the two, but knowledge and know and information and facts. And um, people think high degrees of psychological certainty makes knowledge. So a theist will say they know God exists, but they don't actually have knowledge. They're talking about a high degree of certainty. Um, this is one of the things that is a big issue with our language. We can be quite unclear. So I, we were talking about the, the the typical atheist conflation between knowledge and belief and things like that. Um, but the, 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 there are theists that say they, they know God, God exists, but they have no way of demonstrating that they have knowledge. You know, what they mean is they, they have a high degree of certainty. They're talking about a really strong belief and a really strong belief does not equal knowledge you could have a relatively weak belief but still have knowledge um (laughs) but 
Uh, uh, check out the post knowledge versus information on answers in reason if you want a, a bit more information on that. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Greg, you had to step away. But um, I hope you managed to get back um, in in uh, in time for the knowledge versus belief bit. Um, I do. Oh, yeah. LB. Yeah. Agnosticism is only about knowledge. So that's another one. It only means you don't have knowledge. Ah, I mean, really, realistically, the it's more talking about certainty there. It's talking about the no, as in the certainty. Um, so I, I'm uncertain about this proposition. I, I mean, this is talking about as the psycho psychological state. So the epistemic principle um, was saying that you should maintain um, epistemic uncertainty until you have um, enough um evidence to say that you believe or know something essentially um so even if you did lean one way or another remain agnostic towards it it's now used as a psychological state when discussing a proposition a proposition can be true or false and if you're agnostic well yeah i'm a bit i i don't know what to believe i don't know if it's that one or that one but they're not necessarily talking about knowledge they're going nothing's convinced me so i'm completely uncertain here in the middle and that's why it's used that way <laughs> Oh, don't bring up agnostic atheism again, Philip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, just catching up with the with the chat again. Um, Philip says you think faith is an incendiary word because a lot of theists use it as justification. It is not. No, you're right. Actually, we didn't bring that one up. Um, I don't need evidence. I've got faith. That is an, a ridiculous one because they're they're fine to talk about faith being just trust, um, and it's fine to trust things, but they trust something that is not demonstrable versus us trusting maybe in in science or that bridges aren't going to collapse and stuff like that, and then they put a high demand. And they try and make it the same sort of position. And then they, they put a high demand on things that they have faith in and then say, I don't need evidence because I've got faith. Yeah. And that's a massive circular argument. <laughs> uh, and kind of special pleading if, if someone else who's got faith does need to justify it, <laughs> especially if it's demonstrable and yours is not. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Greg says, it's like the word evil. Non-believers hate that word. I have no problem using it, even if it car car uh, often carries religious baggage. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, evil is just a word for something that's incredibly immoral. Um, ah, which brings me on to one that I hate from both theists and atheists as well. Theists going, if you can't... Uh, it, so if there's no God, there's no objective morality. Um that shows a lack of understanding about what objective morality is. And atheists turning around and go, well, there is no God, so morality is subjective. Again, that's a lack of understanding of both objective and subjective morality, um, which ties back into one of the early, early, early on points of not having enough understanding of the topics that you're discussing. Well, the atheism and subjective morality one is slightly different, I'd say. Um, it's not that God doesn't exist, so therefore morality is subjective. They sort of look for a way to define it as subjective to counter the God argument. Um, but their justification is usually, well, different people believe different things are moral, so therefore morality is subjective which again isn't necessarily the case. I mean, if that's the case, then the shape of the earth is subjective. Yeah, I mean, there's also another definition of subjective that often gets thrown out as well is, well, it's a concept, concepts come from the mind, subjective means from the mind, therefore it's subjective. You know, like, well, okay, there's contextually correct words to be using in these situations. Um so there's well, there's lots of different ways that that one goes wrong, isn't there? Oh, yeah, definitely. And one counter to that is most of the people who say something like that will argue that science is objective. 
But science is a concept that comes from the mind, so therefore science is subjective. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, uh, catching up. Oh, guys, you're talking loads tonight. This is amazing. I love it, but I wish I'd managed to stay on the chat a little bit better. Um, I am just skimming through. Uh, yeah, more conversation on the faith side of things. Um, yeah, no, you're right, Greg. Um, some theists do go a little bit further with the whole faith thing and say it's more than just trusting God. Some do. Um, Philip says tribalism is poison. You're right, but we're all guilty yep. of it. It's part of our evolutionary survival traits. I mean, even right now, we're all being quite tribalistic because most of us in here generally agree with each other. And there could be someone that jumps in and tries to sway the conversation a different way. And without meaning to, our default reaction is going to be, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, all of us behave better, and even though we get that instant "Who are you?" we would be behave better. But there will still be that within us. I mean, it's just something inside of us that we've got to try and ignore and overcome. Well, if I'm remembering my evolutionary psychology right, our brains are about five to seven thousand years behind society. So our cognitive structures are still catching up and we're still in that sort of place where, ooh, he's from another town. He might come in and cause trouble. You know, that that kind of thing. Outsiders, bad. They'll steal our resources. Outsiders. No, no, no. In group. In group. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I do wonder if we'll ever breed that trait out of us because it is still so prevalent in things like schools um, and, you know, uh, the music you listen to, the sports you play, the games you like. Um, and, and then in older life, you know, your religion, your politics and, uh, and, and where you work and the car you drive and all that crap that really doesn't matter all that much that we get so fixated on. Do you think that we'll ever actually get rid of this trait? Because the way evolution works, it's not hurting us. So why would we breed that sort of thing out? If we're still able to continue to breed, um, I don't see why this particular trait will ever be bred out of us. If we get to a point where resources are scarce enough, it will be bred out of us. Or it'll become completely the opposite direction where we become America, basically. <laughs> and we just invade everywhere and take all their resources for ourselves. <laughs> Not that I, you know, America's bad or anything. <laughs> no, that that's the case. It would it would need to be a post scarcity society all across the world before traits like that will start disappearing. Yeah, we can only hope that these negative traits do get bred out over time. I mean, I do think society is improving and people are improving, and you see how kids. Um, like the way they are generally more accepting as a standard and as society has become forcibly more accepting kids aren't having as much hate installed into them at a young age um and so maybe they will raise their kids in a more accepting way and so on and so forth um who knows um it's, it's difficult isn't it um I do hope most of our negative traits do get, you know, bred out of us, along with the, the, the diseases and things that we get. Because we've got um, longer life now, um, certain genes that are faulty, but are faulty in much later life, are now being activated, um, if you get what I mean by that. And, you know, suddenly there's all these... Um, older uh, you know you're getting uh, additional diseases and malfunctions with our bodies and things like that that wouldn't have happened when we only lived for about 30 years but we've already bred by that time as well so that gene has a good chance of being passed on and it may have other benefits at earlier life um it all depends on how much our genes do affect our behavior and they do very 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 strongly and it's the whole nature versus nurture 
argument as well. And I think there's a big part where a lot of stuff is just in our nature and you can nurture positive or negative traits. Um, but yeah, there is a lot that's just built in, um, for want of a better term. Um, Philip, you just say, who is Johnny? Um, who is Johnny? Uh, Johnny Five? Um, <laughs> um, catching up on the chat. Sorry uh, about fun bumbling around. There are so many. Um, Craig says, the fuck I can't use words how you want. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> you can definitely use words how you want. Anyone can use words how they want. And there's a certain point where you'll be understood um, for behaving in certain ways a little bit better than, than others. And there's contextually correct uses of words, like we correct um, creationists on their use of theory and evolution and, and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, but they're still free to use the words how they want, um, obviously. Um, yeah. Right. I'm almost, I'm almost caught up with the chat. I've been skimming through, guys. Um, LB says, I call him Ray Discomfort, the banana-loving fundy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, Clever Thunderstorm Flesh That Thinks says, my screen name is a literal translation of the Chinese word for computer. That is absolutely amazing. Um, is that, That's awesome. Is that Mandarin or uh, one of the other dialects? Um, because when people say Chinese, I, I I never know because there's so many different dialects out there. But that's um, yeah, I'm gonna have to remember that. Um... <laughs> In Welsh, computer is cabrubiadur, which means reading writing machine or reading adding <laughs> machine, something like that. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, Philip says the atheist experience polled their viewers on Jesus mythicism recently. Boy, it's bad. I think I saw a preview before the poll was done and 66% said uh, we're in favor of Jesus mythicism. But then a lot of the atheist experience lot are the equivalent of atheist fundies. Um, so I don't know if they're really a good measuring stick. Um, Sorry. Uh, see, I'm now up to the naturalism is rubbing off on me by Opie. <laughs> <laughs> we're there. We're there. I'm at, at 9.40, 20 minutes behind, <laughs> trying to skip through the chat. Um, yeah, Greg mentions it's always atheists avoiding any burden of proof. Uh, yeah, and purposely misunderstanding burden of proof. And when you correct them on it and just say, well, actually, it's a bit different for a, for a belief than a claim. Every position requires some justification. And that's all we're talking about with the burden of proof here. Here's this article from IEP. Here's this, here's that. Just no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Um. Yes. Uh, so uh, Clever Thunderstorm says, I don't claim to know there are no gods, but I believe there are no gods. I don't simply lack belief. Yeah, that's the same as me. I mean, when you say I believe there are no gods, you're not making a truth or knowledge claim in, in that. All you're doing is making a claim about your internal mental state, about what you think is most likely the case. Um, so it doesn't have the same stringent justification. And... Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how many times we can go on that, but the the, the problem is the Latvist is so desperate hiding behind these these particular um, views. Uh, they they're so afraid to come out of their shell and try and justify their position that they hide behind it and deny everything, and it's really 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 frus frustrating. Um, so Philip says he actually uses knowledge as a very high degree of confidence as well, mainly because justified true belief has issues because truth is never really directly accessible. You're right um, in that in that sense. Um, that's why I think you need to apply more than just the JTB. Um, I think fallibilism and coherence theory work quite well together as theories of knowledge and fall into um, helping that JTB be more justified and true um, in itself. But you're right, there is there is a certain point of 
well, we could just be brains in in that. So therefore, technically nothing we're experiencing is actually true. I take a pragmatic approach there and go, based on the my reality, <laughs> I have a caveat. Um, based on my reality, I've just picked up this empty pill pot and I've swung it in front of the camera. You know, um, I I think that that is good enough for me to to say that it it is true um but you're right it can be hard i mean there's different theories of truth that's one thing that we were going to do at one point wasn't it dave um an exploration into various theories of truth um yeah we've already done our our belief and our knowledge one with the fresh air boys and maybe that should be a a podcast one depending on how long it's going um we'll come to it uh, Manny's here. Hey, Manny, how you doing, dude? He's an hey, agnostic Manny. agnostic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Uh, Manny doesn't know if he lacks belief God does or doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> or, or as Manny says, it means I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> brilliant. I can relate. Um Greg says he gave up trying to label himself. If you want to label me, perhaps Igtheist would fit me best, whatever. I just don't believe any God exists. I mean, I think actually, Greg, you justified your position for why you believe gods don't exist as well the other day quite well in our our stream about justification. Um, I'd say from a a philosophical perspective that I think you're, um, you know, you're, you're an atheist in that sense. And I think you use ichtheism as part of your justification of why you're an atheist in the, in similar way to the, what Dave and I did. You know, we believe gods don't exist and we gave a number of justifications. And one of them was that there seems to be no coherent or consistent definition of God or gods. Um, so that is part of it. Um, I mean, I, attitudinally you could say i've become a bit of an apatheist i'm still an atheist because i hold the belief gods don't exist and i've answered the proposition but i care so little about the topic these days that i'd rather have a conversation about pretty much anything else um <laughs> well an atheist would argue that any talk about god is meaningless there is, there is no actual content there to be discussed and there there is no meaning behind the words so if you think that even if you sort of agree with the atheist that there is no coherent definitions no coherent concepts if you think that there is something meaningful to be discussed by using the term god then you're outside of the atheist yeah yeah definitely it's it's why i say it's almost part of the justification um, rather than being my actual position, because the atheist yeah. wouldn't actually spend the time considering the rest of it like like we did. Um, they'd just go, no, the whole concept's meaningless. I'm not going to spend the time giving you an answer because that's my answer. The proposition's meaningless. Um, uh, Greg, so uh, I'm I'm up to the point where we were discussing objectives. So yeah, there's a huge pet peeve for me. People confuse objective with terms like absolute or universal. They also confuse it with correct. You know, an objective standard isn't necessarily correct in itself. Um, so that is uh, another thing that that tends to wind me up as well. Uh, but you're right, absolute or universal tends to be something they go to. Um, and that's on both theists and atheists. You know, um, theists will say um, objective meaning absolute universal from God. Um, and, you know, it's a similar one for, for sort of a- atheists in that sense as well. Um, Opie says, philosophy is to clarify concepts by asking basic basic questions like what is X? It challenges our common sense. Heuristic people assume theirs is absolute and you are playing games. That yeah. is absolutely brilliant. So heuristic people. Now, it's it's not necessarily a theist or an atheist, but you're right. I mean, it's the conversations we got into recently where we... Like I was asking the the question, okay, so what are the three epistemic answers to a proposition? Because they told me I needed to learn epistemology and logic. So I just asked this question and I basically got that sort of response, you know, that, that I was playing games and I was trolling. I was like, 
I'm asking you a simple question. You've got involved in a conversation. Here I'm having a conversation with you. Oh, you're just another troll. And more dismissive behavior. Um, so, yeah, that's a really good point, OP. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, your question. Should we breed out the tribalism? Um, yeah, you, you could be right to an extent. If we became far too trusting, would we one day um see a lion running towards us and we go oh kitty <laughs> um you're right there should be um wariness still but i'm talking about extreme binary thought and tribalism there's not there's a difference between being wary of someone and being completely tribal um <laughs> um but yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So Greg says he found his birth parents, his mum about 10 years ago and dad about a year and a half ago. His politics, morality, ideology, etc. are way closer to his, to his birth parents than his adopted parents. So, I mean, that ties into what I was saying earlier about how a lot of it is just our nature rather than how we've been nurtured. I mean, Greg even says here that he was raised a fundamentalist Christian. Um, didn't you also hold services and teach apologetics as well, Greg? I seem to remember us having that conversation um, in there. Uh, yes, I am still way behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still think it's 1920. I'm not far behind. <laughs> Um, I think we're pretty much caught up other than the ones that run it. Um, so Greg turns, he says, so in response to your comment, he says, I think if I dig down deep, I agree that discussing God is pointless. It doesn't mean I don't enjoy the conversations. Yeah. So there's still something for you to, to get out of them. I mean, I think that a lot of the conversations I have do end up being quite pointless in themselves anyway but i enjoy discussing people's beliefs and why they believe and how believe and why how they came to that belief and different turns and twists and experiences that they've had um so there is a lot of joy coming out of the conversation and i like having the conversations with people where we actually just have a conversation rather than it turning into an argument where it's not prove your god prove your god or prove your lack of god <laughs> don't want those ones anymore um so uh Clever Thunderstorm says, uh, computer in traditional Chinese characters roughly translates to electric brain. But if you tease out each character in the word, you can get Clever Thunderstorm flesh that thinks. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> All the same. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that it's electric brain as well. That's um, it's basically what it is, I guess. <laughs> um. If you ever get here, that made you laugh out loud. Ah, oh, kitty. I don't remember what made you laugh out loud, Greg, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're a pastor in the Assembly of God. Um, yeah. So, I mean, how how crazy is that? I mean, you've definitely been through it. Um, and and you've, you've ended up, uh, as you said, more similar to... Oh, the lion chasing you. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but you've ended up more similar than your parents that you, you never really knew growing up. Um, you, you only met one of them a year and a half ago, another one 10 years ago. Um, that's, that's really crazy. And you've obviously been heavily indoctrinated with your fundamentalist family and you still come out of the other side. I must say, at some point, Greg, I'd love to to have you on to to just tell us your story. I mean, just just even if it's just you monologuing and Dave and I sit here quietly, which would be quite hard for me and uh, for sure. <laughs> but then <shut> up. <laughs> That's why you're the host, and I'm the guy that just inserts a clip every now and again. <laughs> Uh, Greg actually says he was Jesus camp level indoctrinated and every Sunday and Wednesday night. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Um... <sighs> right. So I finally got to the end of the chat. Um... <laughs> um, yeah. But before you carry on, there's one I want to address that I saw flash up. Oh, did I miss it? Well, it was Leon asking me what I thought of the Graham Oppie book. Oh, and yes. I thought it was really good. Um Felt a bit overpriced because it's pamphlet sized and it's like fifteen pound. Um, 
I think it was something like 80 pages. But it is an excellent introduction into what various terms mean, like agnostic atheist and that kind of thing. Um, and it has a really good introduction to Graham Oppie's theoretical virtues argument and arguments for why naturalism is the better explanation and why we're better off believing naturalism than theism. Yeah, awesome. I recommend it. It took me about two hours to read, though. Oh, nice. I mean that is that's that's an expensive two hours really, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean if it's a good book, um, I've still got a stack of books that I'm trying to get through. You know, it's just I'm finding it so hard to find. When I finally get a bit of time to chill out, I just go. I'm too fucked. I'm too tired. I can't. I miss. I, can I miss reading. Um, I really miss reading. Like both both factual and fantasy stuff. You know. Um, I've still got a couple of Terry Pratchett books that I haven't um, caught up on. Um, I suppose one advantage is it's not going to be writing anymore. So, uh, <laughs> too soon? Uh, possibly my favourite author ever. Hopefully he would have appreciated that as a joke. Um, of course he would. <laughs> well, I'll take a picture of my collection of books at some point and you'll see the amount of reading I still have to do. <laughs> I've only read about half of them, and I'll, I'll show everybody at some point. Ah, uh, brilliant! <laughs> um, it, it... Oh, speaking of Chinese, oh yeah, you got one. Ah, nice. Is that going to tie into a future stream, Dave? No, it's it's like a mythical tale of the forming of china okay it's a brilliant book it's an amazing book and there's a couple of tv series romance of the three kingdoms and one just called the three kingdoms which is newer which are both fantastic series oh, nice uh as i said i still don't have the time to read them. <laughs> I, I think i've got to the point where i keep looking at my books and going oh, i don't know where to start now <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'll uh, I'll get it. As Leon says, though, if it's by Graham Oppie, it's worth it. You're probably right there. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, you know, I, I hope we start getting a cut from uh, Oppie's books. We keep telling people to buy them. <laughs> well, Stephen not... Law recommended them. Yeah, yeah. I I made sure um, on the stream that we were talking about that I put in there just saying, just make sure you talk about his books for kids because it's a great entry level for for people in there. And um, yeah, Stephen Orr's great. I just love his manner. Um, Definitely a fangirl a little bit over him. Uh, (laughs) uh, I still remember that epic three-part video they did with Chesh about Aaron Ra's blog about the definition of atheism, what you mean, Dave and me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've i got an article on it as well. And actually, the article probably goes into even more detail than the, the three-part stream because obviously we'd had time to collect our thoughts, everything that was said in the stream, everything that was learned. I wrote most of the article before the stream went live and then as we had conversations, it was like, oh, yeah, I'll add that bit in. Oh, yeah, I'll add that bit in as well. Um, So, yeah. Uh, Leon, have you not actually seen it? Okay, Leon, um, there is... uh, Or are you talking about... Oh, no, you're talking to Greg. Uh, Have you guys seen the documentary Jesus Camp? No, I haven't seen the documentary Jesus Camp either. Uh, He says it focuses on summer evangelical Pentecostal youth camp for kids. Um... Now, that's interesting. It's actually a documentary as well, rather than a mockumentary. Um, Because I can imagine as a mockumentary, that'd be really fun to watch. (laughs) And all the kids sneaking off to, you know, show each other their underwear and have a a sneaky toke on something and then believing they're seeing God. And, oh, my God, it's a burning bush. And (laughs) This one time at Jesus camp. (laughs) Um, right, I think we've got our new project, Dave. What? Jesus Camp? Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's write it. Let's produce it. And uh, oh, Okay, I thought you meant watching it. I was going to oh, say, I'm not putting myself through that for anybody. No, 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 no. Making our mockumentary. 
Mm, sounds good. <laughs> But um, clever. Um, thank you for for watching that stream that we did as well. Um, but uh, yeah, it, you're right. The blog essentially boiled boiled down to rocks are atheists, philosophers are bad, Wikipedia is a legit source. I'm always right. That is exactly Aaron Ra's tactic with that article. Um, I've at, yeah. So I'll tell you what. I'll chuck a, a link in to um, the article I wrote on it, which has the playlist um um that that we went through so it was called in response to ra's what is atheism so because i got into a conversation with aaron ra after he asserted rocks are atheists um and there are lots of people um getting involved but the bulk of the conversation was with me and one other person um and he decided to write this blog post in in response to it um and the blog post was just full of absolute nonsense um so i'm going to chuck this one out to you so that's the post if you'd rather watch the videos um obviously the it's it's halfway down yeah so uh, sorry not halfway down about oh, a tenth of the way down it says a goblin reads answers in reason versus aaron ra um, and that that's a playlist of the three streams um and we also um linked to the original article and everything that went in there but he kept on asserting things that were just wrong he would go on and on about how he was right and everyone else is wrong and uh, you know it's all antagonistic philosophers disagreeing with him and it's like really so a philosopher every philosopher throughout the years is just trying to antagonize you and he'd be corrected on things like how um a atheos was used um originally used as god forsaken um then commonly used to anyone that doesn't believe in the gods of the state but they could still be a theist but the terms come on from now and he goes no it only ever meant without gods or godless okay, that's not how it was used you're using etymology um and it showed well, how dishonest he was. Sorry, go for it, Dave. I was just going to say, didn't Randolph actually say that the Greeks were using the word wrong originally? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because the people that came up with the word and started using it were the ones using it wrong. Yeah. That's absolutely ridiculous. But then, you know, Randolph is a guy that says that uh, there were Christians 500 years before Christ existed. So <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily trust anything Randolph says. Um, that's on a stream called It's a Load of Cack, if anyone's interested in watching that one. Um, uh, I, I have got, um, I've got some clips that are, are, are a pending release. So um, that, that clip is going to be on there, and that's going to be one that I think I might have to share around once. <laughs> and me. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I mean... We caught um, Aaron Ra out as well, didn't we, in his article where he actually mentioned something about the first atheist, you know, uh, Kunzen or something like that. Um, and this is what he thought. Yeah, in the interview, Kunzen actually said, you know, we believe there are no gods or something. I mean, I've got it in the article for, for, for specifics. But there were so many bits. And this is one of the problems, I think, with... Um, the online um, debate world of both theists and atheists. I know we focus more on atheists, but that's because we're atheists ourselves and we get embarrassed by the at the atheists. Whereas when when a theist does it, it's easy to just go, uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, um, tribalism. It is, it, but it's it's sort of the the, the other way around. Yeah, um, I expect better of my tribe. I don't expect so much of yours. <laughs> yeah. But when people are so willing to argue a point that they're willing to lie or purposely misunderstand things or not accept any corrections ju just because if they do, they might have to rethink their point. Um, it was terribly dishonest. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, Greg says it, the um, the Jesus camp was actually filmed by an atheist, a atheist. So it wasn't from a Christian point of view. Uh, that's interesting. Um 
Yes, and he said it would be a hell of a mockumentary. Should include my part about fingering a girl on the bus on the way home from youth camp. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, Philip says Christian movies are amazing uh, unintended comedies most of the time uh, War Room is I would hilarious agree. Yeah. <laughs> I um, seen I've not Room. seen War Room <laughs> no I've seen God is not great oh uh, really uh, no no not God is not great God is not dead uh, okay I haven't seen that one either um, oh we Kevin Sorbo oh really uh, that Being was one of his cr- professor <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, Sorbo and his uh, uh, Christian propaganda. Um, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> um, Philip says, one of the most hilarious things is that Randolph is aware of Oppie and apparently respects him a lot. Really? Okay. <laughs> Graham Oppie kind of looks like a serial killer, so he's probably afraid he'll come and get him if he speaks bad about him. <laughs> Uh, brilliant. Um, ah, yeah. So, uh, clever thunderstorm says my favorite part of Aaron's blog was when he would cite sources that actually argued against his position. Yeah, no, that happened every yeah. step of the way. We listed all of those. Um, there, you know, he'd 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 have a source. See, uh, there was times where he'd go here. It gives all these different definitions of atheism, and this one's correct. And you're like, well, no, our argument is atheism. Atheism is polysemous, and you're saying that only one of them is correct, and you're being prescriptive. There was one that he provided to the IEP um, backing up his position, which actually says atheism is the view that there are no gods. And he's just like, do you even know what you're saying? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, you're, you're, you're right. There's so many things there. So many things wrong with it. Um, Dave, are there any others that you can come to mind off the top of your head from theists or atheists that are the common mistakes that, that we make? Um, I mean, what have we gone over today? We've gone uh, general heuristic behaviours, not taking the time to understand each other, um, just uh, not taking the time to understand the topic you're discussing, not un- taking the time to actually, when someone presents something different, go, oh, maybe I need to look into this more, just going, no, you're wrong because it's not what I know. Um, there's common misunderstandings about words. There's prescriptivism. Um Oh. Not steel manning the other person's position. That's yeah. another one. Yeah, that's true. So um, steel manning's a good technique that I think um, we should all practice at doing. I'm not great at doing it myself. But one way to, to look at it is you take the time to understand the person's position and you help them build it into an even stronger position that they that, than they currently have. because let's just say they've only got a base understanding of what their position actually is. And so you help them actually build it into a stronger position. Um, So it then shows them that you understand their position. It actually shows them that maybe you understand it better than they actually did. And it shows them that you're not, you know, just out for a fight. You're willing to have a discussion and you'll build a bit of rapport. So they'll start having a little bit of respect. And like we discussed our last Thursday, when changing a mind, respect matters. So from here, you can then start asking questions and they're not thinking that your questions are gotchas. Um, and you can even phrase them in certain ways, can't you? It's like, OK, so now we've got this. We're in agreement that this is your position. Um so one thing I can't work out is how this bit works. Could you explain it to me? And it's almost like little chinks in the armor then, uh, bit by bit. And all of a sudden, this position you've built up for them, they suddenly realize, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's nowhere near yeah. as strong as I thought. And this guy knew my position better than me. Ah, And it's a much better way than getting into, no, nah, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, but yeah, um, catching up with the chat as well. Let me know if you have any other ideas, Dave. Um, Philip says he was in the discord where Oppie had a Q and I, a, that must've been, um, uh, awesome. Uh, it's in a one called philosophical checkmate. Yes. We'd all like the link, please. Philip, if you can get one, if it's an open server, um, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Um, awesome. Um, 
uh, the evidence one, obviously, we discussed, you know, saying something's not evident or saying something self-evident. There's a lot of circular reasoning that definitely goes on. Um, I, I'd say, in general, the, uh, there's more circular reasoning on theistic arguments, but there's also a lot of it on the atheistic side as well that we probably don't um, realise. Um Yes, we do have a Discord, Greg. Um, I will send you a link on Facebook. Oh, I can probably do it now, can't I? Um, we're not on a lot. Sorry, but I am gonna. We're not on the Discord a lot, but I am gonna start trying to actually log in for a few hours each day, just yeah. while I'm studying. Because now that I'm not actually attached to the computer, you know, I can. I think these have a mic in them as well, so I could leave the computer on. You wouldn't see me on camera, but I could study and have discussions at the same time. Yeah, no, I mean that that's a that's a good idea actually. Um I yeah, so we tend to only use Discord for um general chilling um when we're live on air. We don't really use it that much the rest of the time. Um but yeah, that's generally because it's not active. But actually, it might be a better place for us to have our discussions anyway, because I don't know about you, Dave, but I'm quite bored of the way our conversations go on places like Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm I'm not looking for an echo chamber. I'm happy to have a conversation with people that disagree with me, but I just want to have the conversation in the right way. Um Yeah. So I just never thought anybody would ever actually want to talk to me besides you. <laughs> well, see, you were wrong, Dave. You've even Usually. got evidence that you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have to accept people want to talk to you. <laughs> but I'm a hermit. <laughs> okay, they want to talk to you from afar. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> um, guys, Do I I've... have to stand up? No. No, you don't have to stand up at all. <laughs> that's all good. <laughs> um, I've sent you guys a link in the, the YouTube chat. Um, so that, that will last for seven days. So feel free to pass it around um, and uh, jo drop in and join us. Um, everybody wants to talk to dave you're right leon and ditto on the echo chambering from greg yeah it, exactly i don't i don't want to be in an echo chamber i just want to be in a place where i can have the right conversation in the right way um with people that want to have a conversation rather than people that want to have a fight or someone that wants to show off how bright they are and look at me i'm so amazing i know these things um so maybe if we get a few more people in there, I mean, we tend not to have uh, send out the invite links that, that often, uh, but that one's active for seven days for as many people that click on it. So um, feel free to drop in and, and say hello. Um... <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and obviously we'd like to do some more um, general um streams like this one was quite an in, uh, uh an informal stream some of them we do a little bit more higher level some of them um quite a bit more in depth um this one's more just being a general chat with with you fine folks and dave um you're not one of the fine folks dave <laughs> no i'm one of the fat folks <laughs> um but yeah i mean we'd, we we want to hear about your stories and and your experiences and and your lives and so whether it's uh, a sci-fi stream or we're just having a general chat in there um, whether it's voice or text or whatever or do you know what i you know i i play games occasionally we're free to use discord to, to have a game together I'm, I'm pretty easy going um but i will try and make effort to log into discord a little bit more often as well um uh, Dave, if you are going to log in a bit more, you can tell me when I need to get in there because someone's talking. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I mean, I'll I'll start tomorrow. Um, when I get, when I start studying, I'll load up the materials and switch Discord on in the background. Yeah, uh, wicked. Oh, in fact, I can already see Greg, Leon, and uh, Electric Brain uh, have joined already. So brilliant! Awesome. <laughs> Um, so we're we're waiting on you, Philip. <laughs> Get in there, and we're still waiting on Chesh to sort out the stream with us two and Philip. Oh yeah, no, that's true, and we've still got to sort out that stream with Ozzy. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, I have been talking to him a little bit, but um, yeah, my my head's been a little bit in the clouds recently, um, uh, and up my ass as well. Uh, been so busy with so many different things, I haven't been able to organise it quite so well. Um, Greg, you say what games? Um, so the main multiplayer game that I play is um overwatch but recently i've just been playing cyberpunk i don't actually have much time for gaming so when i game it's generally quite late at night because i can't sleep uh, which only aids me not being able to sleep even more um but yeah <laughs> uh, i can see you guys uh jumping in the general chat and stuff like that so yeah the sci-fi one's actually uh generally locked um but i'll tell you what we can we can always do something about that. Look, I'll give you guys I'll give you permissions. You can join us whenever you want. Well, I'm gonna have to go soon, unfortunately. Because yeah. yeah, Emma Emma's gonna want to get to bed. She was in the office today. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, in fact, yeah, it's, it is ten thirty, so um, it probably makes sense that we should um end the stream soonish. Anyway, um. Phil, you said you're in the Discord. I mean, you're the only one that I can't see in there. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're hidden. Um, but yeah, I mean, at some point in the future, it'd be great to have uh, all of you on um, and and have a, a, a bigger chat and see how it goes. Oh, I can see you down there, Phil. You're not coming up in my online thing. So, ah, there you are. There you go. I'll uh nice. I'll give I'll give you perms as well. There you go. So you're all sorted with permissions so that in the future uh, you can always jump on and actually have the conversation with us if you so wish. Um but for tonight uh, I think we're we're done for now. Um so we've discussed a number of behaviors that we should avoid. Um <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully um some of the message gets through. Um, we've got a, a few more coming uh, up. Um, we do have a third part to our atheism one, but I don't think that's going to be next week now, is it? Uh, it uh, It'll be a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there is going to be a part three to that. I'm going to let you all guess what that one's going to be about. Thursday, we usually do an article reading or a website reading or review. Um, I don't actually have one in mind. I know I've released a couple of new articles recently, but I don't actually have one in mind for this Thursday. Um, but I know you need to get off. So let's have a think about that one and put it in. Um, will it be 8 or 8.30, though, on Thursday? Hang on. Let's have a look. Um, I'm but, actually yeah. organized it. Have a calendar and stuff. Oh wow! <laughs> no, nope, it'll be eight o'clock on Thursday because I have no tutorials for a change. Eight o'clock, two tomorrow morning, and I have one on Friday, but I'm actually free on Thursday. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, cool. So I guess we'll do that. Yes, Op, you're right. Discord isn't that lively. Yeah, we we don't do much in our Discord. Also. If you guys um, type in the um, sci-fi live chat, that comes through to the Discord as well. Um, so just just so you're aware, um, you could you could talk to yourself in two different places should you so wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Greg, thank you for saying you enjoy the streams. We appreciate it. Um, we we enjoy doing them. It gives us a bit of time to have a laugh and chat to you folks and discuss topics that interest us and hopefully interest you guys as well. Um, I also get a chance to mess around on my turntables before we start uh, some of the time anyway, um, which is fun for me. Um, I just apologize for how terrible my, my mixing has been. Um, I'd say I'd get better, but I probably won't. <laughs> um but yes phil thank you for saying you enjoy them too um <laughs> yeah it is crazy it's in both places <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah thank you everybody that um did join in added your your own two cents to the conversation uh and i hope that all of you will be back for our thursday stream so uh as you know guys we tend to just stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays around 8 p.m. GMT. Um, that's 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. And is that, is that midday Pacific time? I think so. Um, 
and you guys can work it out there's 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 the internet that will tell you um sometimes we start a little bit later uh, but essentially, uh, I really hope that you guys will be back then. And, yeah, uh, so do I. Yeah. It was really fun, guys. Um, thank you so much, and we'll catch you soon. Nice one. Cheers, guys. Good night. Good night, all.